hello, this is National Master Spencer Feingold back at the Chess Club in Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Today we're going to be looking at some end games, rook and pawn end games, to be specific, as you can clearly tell from this position. Well, almost a rook and pawn end game. After the guy. Let's flip it, huh? And you know what else? Let's full screen it while we're at it. I had it on full screen and then I changed something, I forgot. Flip it, there we go. Get flipped. All right, just like a great house, right? It used to be less valuable. We flipped it, you know, after some renovations. Okay, obvious move to force the rook and pawn in game, right? Bishop takes BE3. Yeah. Making the guy trade queens, because the queen's hanging, and fix Capablanca's structure. How nice is that? It does have one downside from black. That A takes opens up that A file. But luckily he's got a5 in already, so he doesn't have a backwards a pawn. Well, I guess even if he didn't, he'd play a5. But uh, as long as he's got a5, he won't have a backwards a pawn is the moral of the story. And uh, goes for c5. Yeah, king g1. Get that king in, right? Both sides get their king active. Who would have thought? Obvious move so far. All right. So Capablanca made his king as good as possible. You know it's a rook and pawn in game lecture when we're looking at JRC, right? <laughs> it's like every time. 100% of the time, 20% of the time. And now what though? Right? What's the next plan for black? I would think start pushing your minority. Like a minority attack, huh? Yeah. Going for a specific pawn break in general, or, or you know, just pushing in general, I mean, which one? I guess I was thinking just generally, but... Uh, Gain some space? Yeah, maybe go G5, H5, G4. Pawn break. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, that pawn break is a really nice one. Any other pawn breaks that Black's got? seem useful <laughs> to me anyway maybe b5 c4 yeah I mean he could try to break on the queen side too eventually and then I feel like you're trading off his one of his worst pawns the doubled pawn yeah well I think worse than that is you're just giving yourself an isolated a pawn hmm. you know a backwards pawn an isolated a pawn there on a5 and um, well Plays b5, but indeed he does end up playing for the g4 break. On both sides of the board, this is typical Capablanca. I mean, many uh, many lectures that I've given here involving his games, he's gaining space on both sides of the board and trying to squeeze all over the place as a style. Really aesthetically pleasing here. All those pawns in the fifth rank. I love it. I wish he had f5, though. Dang. Come on. Get f5 going. Oh, well. <laughs> as good as he could do, I guess. So we know Black's plan because you told me it was g4. What do you think? How would you prevent that? Or would you allow it, maybe? Mm. Well, it's white. You can just play g4. That's totally true. I don't think black would play g4 if white played g4. Is that what you would do? Audience? Entire audience? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta think about it, right? It's definitely a committal decision to play g4 for white. Well, if you're not going to play g4, maybe you should find another candidate move, right? Right. If that's the only move, then you got to play it. doesn't matter. Yes, I would play g4. <laughs> <laughs> so can't really find another candidate move. And he did play g4. He did play g4. It's bad. You, your f-pawn, I mean, come on. 
You hate your F pawn, right? I guess. You just hate you, that F pawn. You'd have to hate it. All right, to play G4, you would. <laughs> but there is a better way to. Well, Black could still play G4, but there's a better way to, uh, you know, prophylaxis against G4 that I could find. I'll show it to you. Play G4 himself, but Rook H1. That way of G4, you take with the H1, and you've got control of the file. That's well, would you play G4 with black here? No. No. <laughs> no, that's it. That's why. You're not going to play G4 now. That's all. Black still has a lot of space and a better king position, and can play on both sides of the board. You know, you're going to keep your rook on H1 the whole game. Maybe you'll have to, but black will be happy about that. Maybe arrange the A4 or C4 pawn breaks, you know, on that side of the board. But I don't think it's uh, a, a technical win, at least. Maybe it is a win, like, with perfect play, but I would sort of assume that white could hold it. It doesn't look like it should be lost. But what do I know? Maybe it is. It's not great. But he did play g4. Which is an understandable decision, but definitely uh, has its downsides. He gave away a concession by permanently backwards f3 pawn, you know, situation not not to be not to be uh, enjoyed by white he's definitely going to suffer now and it's permanent like i said that's the main problem there's like no way he's ever gonna play f4 but capablanca plays this is like a vintage kappa move really the best move too that's what makes it even better <laughs> the, the quality of the move but it's vintage Kappa. You'd always see him playing a move like this. What do you think, Black's best positional move for Black in this endgame? Maybe just lock it down with H4. Bingo. Great move. Great understanding. You know, sometimes you'd like to keep the tension, but there's no reason here. H4 weakens the H3 pawn. It's permanently stuck there, too. If I ever can get a rook into your position, it could be deadly. For another example of this exact same idea, I did a lecture on rook and pawn endgames and showed the game. Anderson against, uh, I think it was Hubner. And in that game, Anderson did the same thing, but on the, uh, for, for white, you know, still on the H file. Black's pawn was on. Hubner spawn is on h6, and he played g5, and Anderson played h4, h5. Very similar to this. Almost the exact same, actually. And um, that h6 spawn for black was weak. Hubner's h6, and that's why he lost the game, actually. And here, h4 has multiple purposes. It makes the h3 pawn weak, that's true. It also uh, prevents counterplay. White can never play gh and rook g1. Or maybe like rook f2, rook other rook to g1, and, and try to play gh, or h4, or anything crazy like that. h4 takes g5, I don't know. No idea like that is going to be playable. Actually, that might be good, h4 takes g5, maybe. But maybe white would have to prepare that. But anyways, he just shuts all that down. Now the problem with playing a move like this is you might not have enough openings, you know, open lines to get your rooks in. Because you, you basically, it's like an anti-pawn break, right? You didn't open anything up, and and, and you, you, you closed down. That's how you relieved the tension. But still, Capablanca knew he had options. The F-pawn's weak, so he can attack that. And he still has breaks on the queen side to play. So H4 was mostly beneficial. And yeah, stopped all that counterplay. Really good move. It's already a, a loss here. Currently, it's already a technical loss. We can just uh, enjoy the show at this point. Honestly, here goes to double it up, but where's he going to double, right? You don't even know. Choose the A-file. Yeah. What do you think? Audience? <laughs> Entire audience? Hypothetical <laughs> people <laughs> watching? Huh? A4 is the, uh, the whole point, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's and after taking it?
take the rook so he can infiltrate? No, you have to play a more explosive move than that. Play c4. Oh, c4 check. A little intermezzo. But you will take with the rook to infiltrate. He wouldn't try to take with the pawn. That'd be crazy talk. He's even still maybe winning. But uh, yeah, definitely a4 takes c4. Rook comes in. Yeah, Capablanca's really giving a run upon the clinic on this guy. There, that's the, not the move you like to play, I think. It's basically like he's a pawn up, right? He's got D, C, and B against C and B. The F pawn is not useful. And still the H pawn is going to be weak, and the F pawn, for that matter. Every move is winning, so he plays one. <laughs> yeah, takes it. Comes in here. Yeah, basically this is like a dream ending. Plays b3. Yeah, I guess. c3, good move. He was probably anticipating uh, white to try to move the king here after rook c1. But he has a pretty obvious move here that he went for. It's nice that he set this up, but at this point it's pretty clear the move that uh, black should play. I'm sure any audience member, even without a title, could find it. I'm supposing d3. I mean, what other option do you even have, right? You, okay. gotta, you gotta get it in before An you go. An interesting goes. question is, yeah, if white plays king e2, is black winning? No. Right. This is the only winning move. But he was ready for it when he played c3, because he knew the guy doesn't have time for king e2 here, he has to go like this first. But then it's d3. Takes. Oh, who would have thought that he's going to win the h pawn? Promote the h pawn. Wow, crazy. I would have never predicted that after seeing the game. He doesn't even need to do that, though. Like, he could just do anything and win. But this is the most disturbing for white to look at. I like how he's got, like, everything on a dark square. Even the rook on h1. Come on. <laughs> I read a book on Zugzwang. This is going on the cover. Yeah, this is nice. He can't make a move without losing, well, I guess f4, but he's going to lose his rook, like if rook a2 or king f2, or rook c1, <laughs> for that matter. Yeah, really tough for, for white here. Up a pawn, though, but has to resign. That was a really clean example, just like you expect from Capablanca against some random guy. Good name, though, Leopoldo. Leopoldo? <laughs> Alright. It was just an exhibition game. Just for fun. I'm sure Capablanca had fun. <laughs> I think I would. But alright, let's move on to the next one. Don't say it. Alright, so we're back after some technical difficulties. My bad. But I meant to delete the previous moves, but I delete the after moves. Dang it. Anyways, I made it. Rook b7. This is, uh, unfortunately for me, a game that Petrosian actually ends up losing. Why would I ever show a game like that? Flip it. There we go, that's better. Against Portish. Petrosian Portish. Candidates quarter. F and here, Petrosian has a problem. Failure to communicate? No. It's his B pawn. Right? Terrible problem there. He doesn't handle it in the best way. He's probably worse after what he does, although it could be. Uh, he could still hold it for a draw, but he's going to be worse. He ends up losing a pawn. So I was hoping if you had black here, you could find a way to not lose the pawn. Easier said than done. I needed to do this too. It's always something, right? Oh no, no, wait. This is right, but look how you can see the. See what I mean? You can see the toolbar. Yeah. But you shouldn't be able to if it's full screen, right? Yeah. There see, it goes. that was really weird, though. That wasn't even my fault. <laughs> the only the other part was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but now what? Anyways, sorry for distracting you there. Oh, you're fine. Uh. I assume you got to make some kind of counter threat, because I don't see a way to save, just protect the pawn. 
should have been a detective, huh? Oh, it's, it's the, uh, yeah, tripled in, in quantity. Oh boy, so anyways, okay, you kept caught up here. You missed the first thing, but it was the easiest one, so don't worry. This one, we're looking at one of my favorite players with black, but he actually loses. Don't do that. And uh, you'll notice that black's b6 pawn is attacked more times than it's defended. Twice against one defense. So, I was asking how you would play this position with black and not just lose the pawn for nothing. Uh, you could defend it some more. How's that? Because before he walked in, he just said, you can't defend it anymore. Yeah, that's true. Um... Uh, blacks are in bad position. Agreed. Although if you looked with the chess engine, it would say zero. So it's not actually equal. But definitely black is worse, right? I mean, okay. black's under pressure. He has to find the right moves. Okay, queen a4. Queen a4. Great move. Really good. How did you find such a good move? Are you being sarcastic? No, that's a good move. Oh, okay. Oh, it's white's move? No, it's Oh, my God. Queen a4. Hold on. I knew we would get like this when they walked in. <laughs> Queen a4 is a move for black. So it's obviously black's turn. If it was white's turn, he takes the b pawn. I was looking at a1. Oh. Steak sauce, I get you. I get you. Queen a4 is a great move. That's one of the, I think, two or maybe even three moves that are totally fine. It attacks the a3 pawn. And then once you do that, you can check him. Well, sure. I liked the move queen c6 personally. He played a b, which is a mistake. Queen oh, a4 you equal. To check, uh, the king. With queen c6, right? Uh, is that what you. Because uh -huh. that's what I was suggesting here. It threatens the fork, and I like that it keeps the queen in the center. Um, I mean, he could still take and check and go for this, but it's equal. They're just going to trade the a pawns, and it'll be a draw, most likely. So queen c6 or queen a4, which is even simpler. Um, are both just totally fine moves and should most likely lead to equality. But A, B, not fine. Not so fine. Mm, no, Here, that's good. now he's going to lose the B4 pawn and just be down a pawn. Uh -huh. Alright, so he trades the queens into a rook and pawn in game. That should be a, probably a draw. But now, like I said, he's worse. He's down a pawn, so he could definitely lose. No doubt about that, and he does lose. Although, he has to make one more mistake. We'll see that it's not a loss. Wait. With perfect play. Yes, sir. I have a good idea. Tell me about it. Um, if it's Black's turn, you can move it to... 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Check. That'll Check. show him. Then he'll resign? No. Oh, so that's... Uh, he'll just play King H2. It's not a problem, right? Oh, cool. He could so do that. Do you think the check is like good? He has limited places yeah. to go. That's true. I'd like to be able to check him later if I want to though. I mean, you might check just to go behind the passed pawn. I like that idea. But check in itself isn't good. Check is good if it's like a fork. You know, or it's check and then he can't move the king and it's called mate. Something like that, you know? Or like you have to give up material to avoid the check. You know, check by itself isn't necessarily the answer all the time. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah. You, you don't play every single check. You don't play every capture you, you have, too, right? Yeah. You wouldn't play rook takes f2, for example. So yeah, checks and captures are good forcing moves. You have to look at them, but it doesn't mean you always have to play it. He just goes h4, or h5, rather. h4, king g7. He's just setting up a solid formation, right? Goes over there, you know, trying to slide on over. Doubles it up. But he's got rook f5. This is a great way to counter these doubled rooks. So I put your rook here, defend your f pawn, even attack the other f pawn. So he could bring his rook down to a2 and get in 
the seventh rank and, and draw, you know. So he stops out with Rikitu. Check. And does go behind the pawn. Rooks belong behind past pawns. Here, rook b2. White plays the only move to defend the f pawn. And then they trade the rooks. And we're in this end game, which rook and four against rook and three is usually a draw. Uh, but white does have a passed pawn, so it does give him winning chances. Although I think this exact position with perfect play should be a draw. Although maybe you can analyze this for like ever and win by force somehow, but I don't think so. King h6. His plan is to trade pawns away. G5, right? That's a good plan when you're worse in a rook and pawn in game, because usually, you know, rook and pawn against rook is a draw. You know, more pawns on the board is more winning chances. So if you're trying to draw the the worse endgame, you don't mind to trade pawns. You generally prefer it. Obviously not always, but you know, generally that's your idea. Pokes the pawn, backs it up, check, and then draw agreed. Just kidding. Rook <laughs> b8. Obviously not, I wouldn't show the game probably. And there's no way anybody would agree to a draw here. Rook b8, g5, he gets it going. B5, takes, takes. And now his plan, he's just going to attack those kingside pawns, right? He's not fooling around. He's not wasting time. He's, he's getting things done. King d4. All right. So now, I mean, the other moves were maybe not totally obvious, but pretty clear, the, the intentions. He could try to win some pawns on the king side. And imagine, like, white does take a pawn or two. Well, let me get these colors going. And then, uh, you know, you're pushing your pawn, and you move your rook and say check somehow. And then you push your queen, and I have to take. I have to give up my rook, right? You guys follow me here? That, that could be a draw. Rook against two pawns. It depends how good the pawns are and where white's king is. If white needs to help with this king over here, then it might be easier to, to draw for black. And if black does take the pawn on the h-pawn here and then get this pawn going a little bit, it could be easier to draw that way as well. So it's going to be tough to win this kind of position for white because of those rook endgames. In fact, I think my most recent, no, it was two endgame lectures ago, I had a, a similar endgame where I was trying to avoid, have, I had um, like a passed pawn actually on the h-file, and I was trying to avoid rook against pawn because it was very difficult to win. I thought I couldn't win it, but sometimes I could have, and I should have allowed them, you know, the, the ways to win. Don't disallow those. It doesn't make sense. And I ended up not winning because of that, actually. So it's kind of tough here, but anyways, it's black to play. I've been rambling a bit to let you guys think about the position. What do you think are some candidate moves for black at this point? F2. Rook takes F2. What else? King F4. King F4. You could do, uh, yeah, and then after that, you can do rook d2 check. Rook d2 check, after king f4, I guess. But, okay. Well, I gotta tell you something. I wouldn't play king f4 ever. If I'm gonna move my king up, it's gonna be g4. Oh, yeah, because then you're attacking that pawn. Yeah. Oh. That's, I was just talking about that. Remember, he's gonna t try to take the pawns. I mean, I guess you could try to take the f-pawn first, but you can even play rook takes then, so why would you move the king to take? Well, anyways, uh, I would like to take the h-pawn and push my h-pawn. So king g4 would be a candidate move for me. And rook f2. After that, kind of difficult to suggest a candidate move. You don't really want to play any other rook move. It would kind of be a waste of time. And time is pretty valuable here. Every tempo is going to count. You know, imagine you had two extra tempi, you went here and takes, you'd be like, yeah, that's that's better. So, all right, let's calculate them a bit. All right? You know what? <coughs> I mean, it's pretty funny, because um, black is down a pawn, and it's probably going to be a draw, but if anybody's going to win, it's going to be black. What? 
That's not right. If anybody's going to win, it's going to be the guy up a pawn with a passed pawn. Right? Yeah. The, the B pawn is the winner here. What's he going to win with? The H pawn? I mean, maybe, but that's less <laughs> potent than this one. There's no way. Well, There's no way. The rook can... If the rook can take F2... Sure. They'd be... Well, okay, what would white play after that? That's why I said we should calculate it a bit. You can't, this is a typical low-rated player mistake. That you're always, you're looking at moves, and then you're like, this one's good, this one's bad. What are you talking about? How do you know if the move's good or bad, if you haven't analyzed it? Analyze first, evaluate second. Alphabetical order. Right? Analyze first, evaluate second. So you can't tell me, well, Rook F2, that's good. Well, what will white do? What if it loses? Is it good if it loses? I mean, come on, are you kidding me? You gotta analyze a bit. You should keep the work on the B file, because then it prevents <laughs> the pawn from turning into a queen. So after after rook takes F2. Now you're talking. Does the king go to C3 to prevent the rook from going back to the B file? Maybe. I wouldn't know without analyzing that a bit. <laughs> you know? Are you following here? Rook F2, king C3 is what he wants. Yeah, yeah, I heard. What would uh, Black do then? Try to get back on the B file. Right. Yeah. Now you're making sense. Now you're making sense. That's right. Try to get well, back I on the B file. Always making sense. No, you were not always making sense. What about when you said Black could win this? Was that making sense? No. It took the F2 I mean, it's theoretically possible Black could win. But he's gonna need a lot of assistance. <laughs> is what I'm saying. If Black was Carlson and White was like me or something, he will totally. Die. You're right. But Magnus would win like king against king and queen against you. <laughs> He'd win with the king, you know. You'd be like, I resign. <laughs> no. I always wondered if you resigned, but your opponent resign. didn't have mating That's material. An opportunity to right. <laughs> I guess this would just be a loss. That's right? an opportunity to know Magnus Carlson. It's an opportunity to know Magnus Carlson's. Mine. Resign versus insufficient material. It seems like we got off track here a bit. <laughs> but how would the rook get back to the B file? So after rook takes F2, king C3, rook F1. Logical. Um... There's a couple of ways, but they're not the best. He already ones. said rook F1. Okay, well, Were you listening to him? Yeah, I was, All right. but I thought he said something else fun. He's, he's going to here, so you can get back behind the b-file, like you said, without the king, which is now on c3. Oh, I wish I had another color here, come on. There we go, good, good. If he gets down c3, he can't go take it, it's too far. That's not a knight. Well, I mean, really good color coordination there, I like it. I don't know why I changed from green to red, though. But anyways, uh, he did take the F-pawn, but I'll say that King C3 just doesn't even make sense. Like you said, Rook F1, Rook F3, check. White's going to win this by moving the King up the board. Move the King up the board. That's how you win a Rook and Pawn endgame. I know I've never said that, but <laughs> that is the right idea. Yeah, he's going to try to move the King upwards. You know, let's see how the game went, first of all. He played rook f2, it's probably not wrong, but king g4 will draw. For example, um, I did look at kicking the rook away, which now like rook f2, b7 would win. But you could still back it up. What? Right? You could still back it up. Wait a minute, hold on. Tell me about it. Tell me about what? Play f2. You I just, just said rook f2, b7 would win. You're saying do a thing that loses instead of not losing? I, you sa I said this, that, um, but I, I said this wins and you agreed, right? Okay. So black shouldn't do that if that wins for white, right? That's all there is to it, you know? It's not a complicated thing. Do something that doesn't lose, that's all. Yeah, here, this, and again, this is just analysis. He didn't play king g4. B7, take it. But yeah, I couldn't really win. You know, I tried this. K 
King G2. King H2 actually was losing. Um, because of, uh... Rook G8. Yeah, keeping the king pinned down on the H file, then you can't, wi you can't, you'll lose then, for sure. You know, if I get my rook here and your king is pinned on the H file, then uh, you can't take the F pawn, and you can't move your king and queen. So you're just going to lose if I have a rook against, you know, if white has a rook and black doesn't. You know, after white goes here and queens, for example. But king G2. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, take the pawn. I was, yeah. Exactly. Oh, good idea. Great idea. Queen, take, take. This is exactly what I was talking about, remember? Uh, that, this is an okay position. This is probably going to be a draw. Yeah, that's why I put equal. Because it, it is a draw. Yeah. White can easily take the F pawn, but then he's going to have to sack his rook for the H pawn. And if you can call it a sack. And then it'll be a draw for sure. So this actually was, uh, I mean... Maybe I could have played better for white, like maybe not king c3 there, now that I'm looking at it, but... Well, I tried some other stuff and nothing was working, so I just tried to give like the most normal line. Oh, this was one of your games? Like... No, it's Portish against Petrosian, so you can see the names up there. Oh, I never realized that. Leos, Portish, Tigran, V, Petrosian, <laughs> Vartanovich, I guess. Anyways, he goes for rook f2, which is not losing, but he already had like you know, a more or less clear draw there. But rook f2, this is an interesting move that Portish plays. He wants to play b7, but then rook b2. That's why you were trying to play king c3. Um, but he just goes to get the rook out of the way first. Really great move. Really a great move, because after he, if he goes behind the pawn with rook b2, it was, uh, it, it's going to be king c5. Moving the king up. And trying to queen that way. And he can even try to play, like, for example, rook a4, use the king to help the pawn, and then he'll win. That's a win, then. Because black won't be able to get anything going. Maybe black could move his king and try to push the pawn, but then once your pawn is here... Yeah, no, you could try that still. You could still try that. No, this isn't even lost. Does go rook b2, king c5. Gives him a little check. Always repeat, right? Because I always talk about always repeat, and then you see yeah, how Portish a does it. Three time repeat is a draw. Right, but he's White is not going to repeat three times. He'll just repeat the position I one, have a one time. Yes. Why? I mean, Check. if you're losing, pretend to go to the bathroom uh, three times. <laughs> That's a three time repetition. <laughs> That's true. I don't know why more, more people don't do that. Maybe you should write, like, a book about it. <laughs> yeah. The three-time repetition. <laughs> you know what I do when I'm... All right, because let's get back to reality, all right? Come on. <laughs> let's get back to reality over here. It's uh, black to play, and here he makes the losing move, unfortunately. Does Petrosian. Let's see if you guys can find a good defense for black. For black? It's black's turn, yeah. Might want to think about it for a second, you know? Um, checking isn't a very good idea. He did it again. Oh, he checked? No, I'm just saying you evaluated the move without analyzing it. You a check, you didn't analyze it any further. You only looked half a move ahead, right? Well, yeah. So then, that's not enough to say the move is good or bad. You're going to have to, like, I'm, I'm just, calculate I'm more. Just you can't, you can't do that. You have to calculate. That's how you, that's how you figure out which chess move is best. You know? That's oh, how you, oh, I, tr oh, wait, trust I think, me. I think I know. <laughs> you know? I know what I'm talking I, I, about. I might know. Hold on. But rook c2 is a candidate um, move. So we can think about it. Wait, no, that's not a very Did you have another candidate move other than rook c2? Anyone? King d7. King d7. If you play moves that aren't those moves, um, you might lose immediately. Maybe king f5 would be a candidate move, though. King f5 to g4, try that again, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, black did move the king away from there, so... It seems like that wasn't his plan. So, king d7 or rook c2. Rook c2? 
That's what you suggested. No. Yeah, well, I didn't suggest it. I was just saying to myself. Rook D7 is a good move. Idea. King D7. Yeah, King D7 or Rook C2. Now, those are the two candidate moves. But again, just like your brother, you just decided the move was good. <laughs> You know, based on its aura, I guess. I mean, how do you know if the move's good or not if you don't you analyze it? You want to get the king to the top of the board. Hey, that's well, what you said. Well, but the top oh. of the board for black would be here, right? I'd be wanting to play you king know? d7. How am I supposed Whatever. to know? They're both at the same time of the board, and this is yeah. the end game. So yeah. what about king d7? What do you think white would consider? I don't think you should move the rook. Well, it's in a good I'm not even going to talk to you about it because you will refuse to analyze. You know, you're not I'm even looking at. Right now. I'm analyzing that's that. not an, that's not analysis. Analysis is black plays this move, white plays that move, black plays this move, then white that, plays that, that move. That's why I'm saying the rook shouldn't move because if he like tries to take that h pawn, then the. Uh, uh, this is not analysis. This is crazy talk. Okay, well, okay, can you stop for a second? Let's listen to us analyze. No talking. Will you listen to us analyze so you can see what analysis is? King d7, then it's white's turn. So what would white consider? I was worried about white playing uh, rook b5. Definitely, right? That's the problem with king d7 is rook b5. White's trying to block you and then queen it. And okay, you could try to run your king back to defend, but then... I'm going to run over here, and so you're going to have to calculate, right? I know, but that's... I, I no, you don't know. Bad. You don't know what it is, so don't even say it's bad. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's good. Oh. It's better than, um, it's, it's better than, um... Rook C2 check? What would white play after Rook C2 check? Just tell me the move Wait, white would play. I never said Rook C2 is good. I said the exact opposite. So what does what white know. do after... I agree that you said rook c2 is bad. We're all in agreement there. I'm just saying, what would white play after rook c2? But you refuse to tell me. He'll never tell me. <laughs> um, let's see. Where king b4. Hey, didn't I say that you want to move your king up? Oh, yeah. King b4 is back, right? Okay, king, okay, king d6. Uh, uh, c6. King b5. Okay, no. Yeah. King c6 is illegal, but almost. King b5, as an adult said. Shocking. B5? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, trying to get up there. Yeah. Because this move would be illegal, and that one would too after rook check. You know, it would make those moves illegal. No, that, that move is already illegal. D6 is already sure. illegal. Sure. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with that. But if you want to move your king up, you have to take this green path that I outlined. So, all right, let's analyze it further. We just started. Or you're, you've been done analyzing, I guess. But let's let's get started here. Rook c2 check king b5. Then it's black's turn. So then, uh, okay. Rook c2 check mom g2. And then after rook c2 king b5 and then. Wait, uh, uh, king king a6. Okay, so well now we're now we know what. But it's black's turn white after. Is gonna oh, do. Yeah, okay. Now we know what white is gonna do so we What's should probably gonna do? try to <laughs> he's gonna try to move his king up to a6 and then advance his b pawn dang he's right actually ha! <laughs> he remembered what i just said that's great a beautiful mind. that's really good russell crowe right yeah, great movie <laughs> oh, no no I'd... That? yeah i did I I, it's I don't okay plan to like have scary illusions you don't plan to have that? I don't think anybody plans to. It just happens. You know? <laughs> but anyways, uh, rook c2, king b5. Black's plan would be to move the king in front of the pawn, right? King d6 or king d7 still. This is how the game goes, but as we'll see, it's not enough. Let's take a look, because you guys won't analyze anything ever. So I check am analyzing. Here. I there. Analyzed. You said I All right, did. stop talking. King a6. King c6. So, Petrosian has expertly stopped Rook B5. Who's, Petro who's Petrosian? He has black. black. Or white? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see how it says Petrosian second here? Like this says Leos Portish, that's one guy. Mm -hmm. And then Tigran Vartanovic Petrosian. Mm -hmm. That means that Tigran Vartanovic Petrosian had black. Mm -hmm. Most people just call him Petrosian. Although there are a lot of grandmasters named Petrosian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, anyways, now it's white to play. All he has to do here is drop it back. Why do you drop it black back? Well, he's thinking, I'm going to queen my pawn. Yeah. But then if I try to do that, what do you think black will do to stop me? King C7. And then after king A7? Rook B2. Rook B2, right? So he's getting ready after rook b2 to give the old check. Force the king away, and then we'll queen and win the rook. And, and win the, oh, the end game. Oh, I see. Yeah, he's pretty smart, huh? Wow, you learned something today. That's insane. And this is I actually enough to win. every day. No, you don't. Not every day. Come on. I read so many. That's, exact, that's exactly proving my point. Anyways, this hey, happened. Rook b4. He's, he's not a grandmaster, but he would be a good grandmaster if he wasn't. <laughs> grandmaster Why are you telling me about Silman when you even know what title he is? Um, he Raise eyes. Master when, um, he is good at repeating what I just said, though. He did it twice in a row. That was good. That means you learned. I like it. Anyways, you got to learn that it's resign time because the guy's about to queen his pawn. Uh, and, and that's too much. Resign. Well, I think if you're like playing in a candidates match, you can resign. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, yeah. He should just go to the bathroom three times. He should have just gone to the bathroom three times. Well, hold on a minute. Let's go back here. So rook c2 ended up losing what to a good idea. King d7 will draw. Yeah, come on. King d7 will draw though. What was the move that he was afraid of? Black? Yeah, it's white's turn now, but what move was black afraid of after king d7? We talked about it briefly, and then you said, this move, what? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, king c2! Yeah, king c2. Uh, no, rook c2! Rook b5. b5? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah! It was a long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we did talk about it just for a second. That was another uh, candidate move for black. We were discussing I these two candidate that. moves. We looked at rook c2 briefly, that's how the game went, Petrosian lost. And we're going to see how this should have been a draw with king d7. Now rook b5 is obviously what he didn't like, but it is a drawn king and pawn endgame. A little bit surprising, but understandable that white will have the h-pawn at the end and oh, it won't be a win. win. Yeah, oh, black's yeah. totally going to win, you're right. Was that sarcastic? Yes. <laughs> yes. Watch how it's going to be a draw. Oh, he should have just moved the pawn! Oh yeah, he should have gone here and then no, king no, no, takes? No, 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 we got um, the king. Um, the king was at D... Yeah, he should have um, gone um, F4. And then king E4. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. Forget that. Yeah, thank you. I will forget that. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> king here takes. Well, this is a draw because we get our king here. If you get your king there, it's a draw. That's how it works. See? Hooray, one tempo in time. And it's a textbook draw, as everyone knows, even the children Wait. in the class. Oh, they don't know. It's the H part of... No. Just it's trust it. me, it's a draw, then. <laughs> you know, just trust me, it's a draw. So he Wait. didn't believe that Rook and Pawn game was a draw, and instead played here, it, but ended up losing. I already said, just believe me, it's a draw. This isn't obvious King and Pawn game class. It's a Rook and Pawn game. That's too obviously a draw. So I won't okay, go over it. Back for that person sitting behind us. I do too. Sam's, Sam's but like, you know who I really feel bad for? Sam's like yapping. Myself. Like, <laughs> That's who I really feel bad like, for. Alright, alright. Quiet down I'm so we can get this learn. over with. That's Are you trying to learn? Yeah, I am. Are you trying to learn? They'll get them in the comments. Alright, like, yeah. You guys are going to get eviscerated in the comments. <laughs> really. You know, to put it mildly. Alright, let's see, where am I going to start this? I had a technical difficulty and I accidentally deleted the after moves instead of the before moves. So, let me look and see like what number I want to be oh, at. Oh snap, okay, Magnus Carlson's already going to win. Yeah, that. you're right. But he's playing a world champion. That's somewhat true. So, Magnus Carlson's still going to win. Yeah, do do do. It's a rapid game. Oh, Maybe oh, even oh, blindfold like rapid. Fire. This is how fast they were playing the game, too. <laughs> Probably. Probably really, not. Who is that? Magnus Carlsen? Ruslan Paramondes? What the? Almost. Ruslan Ponomaryov. He's pretty good. Magnus Carlsen needs no Wait, introduction. Now, Pana, clearly... Pana Who the heck is Carlsen? 
a lot of times I have this conversation with my students, like, you would lose Rook and three pawns each against Magnus, and they're like, no. But, uh, have Ponomaryov have lost this position, so I'm right. I knew I was right. And it's a rapid, but you'll see how he gradually loses it, too. It's not like he moves his Rook and Magnus takes it. Let's see. Rook c4, not necessary, but he's stopping f4. King g3, got that king in there. e6, he's stopping, I guess, e6, but I don't know. I don't really think he'd do that. But anyways, he's trying to play to target the e-pawn. That's his plan, because the e-pawn is a little overextended. It does make it, like, yeah, somewhat so. of a problem. Check. Break? Yeah. So he did it, right? That e-pawn's isolated. Yeah. Shouldn't be a problem. King g6 would have been h4. And it just like Petrosian, Ponomaryov's trying to trade the pawns. Right? Trying to trade the pawns. That's what you do when you're worse in a rook and pawning game. Try to trade them pawns. But Magnus is uh, keeping it steady here. Oh, I have a good move. Oh, here? Um, wow, I'd love to see a really good move uh, here. For black, <laughs> it was, it's, uh, it's king, it's king f5. Yeah, that's what he's going to go for. It, turn, yeah, it's white's turn, and he yeah. might get checked. Well, he might not, though, because that might weaken the h pawn. But yeah, king f5 is the idea. Okay. You're not wrong, for once. Shocking. Okay, that's, am I ever wrong? I mean, are you ever right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he goes for h4. This isn't necessary, yeah, but... This isn't necessary, but he, like I said, we want to trade the pawns. And even if he loses that h pawn, it's rook and two against rook and one. It's definitely a draw. Goes back. This is a nice movie. It's just getting ready for, like, to move his king and not allowing rook a7. You know? But again, obviously, frankly, a draw. Even if he loses that pawn, which he will. Don't worry about it. He'll lose that pawn. Targeting both pawns here. Why don't you just Check. take the pawn? Which one? The e pawn? Or yeah. Because then rook takes f7. That would be a trade. And obviously... Oh, a trade isn't the worst thing Magnus the wants to win. Trade. Right, if you were trying to win, he doesn't want to trade pawns, remember? If you're, if you're like losing and you're trying to draw, trading the pawns brings you closer to a draw. So he, he'd like to not, he'd like to put more pawns on the board, but... Well, how is he going to defend that um, F7? Good question. Uh. There you go. <laughs> See? Well, I mean, why didn't uh, the rook take the um, F7 pawn? He's because it's a check. Oh. He's supposed to do his, he attacked the pawn, then immediately was checked, and then defended it. And now the E pawn's hanging again, so he went back to defend it. And now he's trying to uh, go back here. He's trying to play, he's trying to take this with, like he's trying to check, and then when your king moves, his rook will defend this after king takes, you know. So if you play back to a7, although maybe you could play king g2 even, but. I feel bad for that. Yeah, you should feel bad for him. Cause, yeah. Yeah, he wants to move his, uh, his rook, but he can't. He tries. He got so far. No, he didn't. Well, I mean, it's like a hundred move game here. Oh, really? Yeah. He got far from um, playing Magnus. But... Doesn't trade the pawn still. Finally took it. Okay, geez. Right, now the 50 move roll starts over again. <laughs> Dang. Tough life for Panamari off here. So already here he gets into it. Uh, he could have, like, forced a drawn and a technical draw that we all know. The Philidor position. Go back to like, you know, six endgame lectures ago if you want to find my uh, ex explanation of the Philidor and Lucina positions, which uh, I did a great job. <laughs> if I do say so myself, I did all right. But anyways, I don't like to teach that technical stuff so much. So how do we force it? Force that endgame that I'm talking about. Rook and pawn against rook. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not 100% forced, but... You know, it kind of doesn't have too many options. Well, you want to get rid of that, that uh, pawn. That's right. So, so, uh... F pawn, I, right? Yeah. Any pawn. I mean, there's only two, so... <laughs> uh... Oh, wait, wait, wait. How can you find it? 
How can the kids say wait so much? Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'll wait. Um, wait, uh, uh, um, wait. Um, <laughs> Got him. Rook C6. Rook C6. I'm gonna assume you mean Rook C7. No, Rook C6. <sighs> well, I was thinking. Wait, what? Then if you take the E pawn, then the yeah, F pawn will get you. Yeah, your brother's right. Rook C6 yes, is a ridiculous you're suggestion. Right I was right. You're only right because he's wrong. <laughs> yeah, you should cry, curl up in a ball there. <laughs> Any suggestion from an adult? No? All right, let's just take a look. You guys are so bad. He played this normal move, but it doesn't do anything. Check. The the I guess the best move to try to win is king h7, but I don't think you want to do that. But if you play the normal move, there you go. We did it, right? We forced the pawns off the board. It's just gonna be a Philidor draw. Again, if you guys want to see that, you're going to have to see another video. Oh, seriously? You know. That's going to be a draw? Yeah, yeah. This end game where you trade these pawns, if the, well, in this case, the white king, the weaker king, who is down a pawn, is in front of the passed pawn, it's generally a draw. But again, you're going to have to look at the Philidor Lucina lecture that I gave, or uh, hire me to teach you that. <laughs> Anyways, he goes here, but now Magnus has got chances. He's trying to check the guy, get his rook and king around the e-pawn. That'll show him. And he actually blunders with the check here. Now he's losing. He has to go king f4 only move. And after check, he has to, has to go king e3. Has to only move. He can't play, for example, king f3. Okay, king g3, rook e4 is obviously going to win. Well, maybe not obviously, but it'll win. So king e3, not king f3, because then here we got the check, remember? Check. We'll defend our pawn after we take this pawn, and then we'll win. All right? We'll easily win after that. Check. So he has to play king, king f4 and then king e3. Tough defense. Goes there. Uh, this is, again, a variation to try to not lose. Check. King d4 only move. But yeah, I actually just accepted this at the end. I couldn't make any other progress. I mean, I guess you could play rook h7, but that's not really going to win it, is it? That's probably not going to win. But instead, Ponomaryov, he didn't do that. He gave the check. And then Magnus blundered his rook with king h6, jk, king h7. There. And it's already a win. Rook F1 X clam. Dang. Yeah. Easy plan. Even a child could find this plan for Black. How does Black win? What's I used the plan? To be a child. Oh. Right. <laughs> Come on, find the winning plan. I am. White's a child. just gonna do nothing. He'll just go here and there. Right? Um, How do you win with black? If I just do nothing, sit around. Find the winning plan. Rook takes pawn. That, no. win, that wins for somebody. No. You don't see the pawns defended? Yeah, I think Slim just left town. Because I got mm. two chances to get it. What about uh, any adult in the room? Ooh, Named Spencer. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an adult. I was, I was just I'm, thinking, I, I'm not going to be an adult. I didn't like... No, almost. Two <laughs> years! I didn't like rook g6 check, just because it lets the king get back in. That the would obviously... I know what he meant. Right. But that obviously... Tell me that. <laughs> that obviously is horrible, right? So never play f6? Oh, what did I just say about trading? That was like everything right. I said before this. He was right, never play f6. All right, let's see. You guys are so weak. Wait, why didn't you let me solve it? Damn. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I thought you would have solved it. Yeah, possibly. Oh. Yeah, go bring it around town. SpongeBob. That guy died recently. Stephen 
Hilden Hillenberg. You still watch SpongeBob when you're older still. than me? Still. Yeah, of course. Are you and joking? Crazy. Now I mean the pond's a goner now, huh? Because if you Wait, go back how here. Did he move to D two when um he couldn't oh. because of the rook? Uh, I was just going backwards. It was here and then he moved here. But I was just trying to show you the plan. It was like this. Moving the king around to win the pawn. King d5. That's the winning plan. Did that. That was pretty complicated. Now it's not complicated. What about for them? Yeah. I think um, Pawn Mario would have won this with white against them. Not resigning is mildly insulting. It's a rapid game, and it was Rook and Four against Rook and Four. It's true, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you know this one? I have a story about this game. Oh, I didn't you know, know that it was so famous. Like. Well, in, in, right. <laughs> in September of 2012, I played a tournament in Minnesota, and in the last round, we were tied for first, and I had this exact end game, except my opponent had no F pawn. And I was thinking, if Magnus wins this four against four, I should win it four against three, the guy having no F pawns. So I was pretty confident I would win, and I did. So I won the tournament. But I knew this game and I couldn't believe Pano lost. Yeah, famous story there. But yeah, Pano did lose Rook and Four against Rook and Four. But it was kind of gradual. Like, he was worse at the start because his E pawn was a little weak. You know, Max was around and around and around. And he got this good pawn break going. You know, now the E pawn's weak. And he traded the pawn on H4, but it gave him an isolated pawn, and then he won that. But then even still, it was a draw. But he had to play accurately to draw. And he, uh, like we said, he missed a chance here. Rook g8 to, to g7. So too bad for Ponomaryov, but really instructive games there. Uh, definitely, you know, in my opinion, pretty instructive at least. Too bad Petrosian lost that game, though. Ah, I wish that, wish I could have shown one that he won, but I couldn't find one on such short notice <laughs> that I didn't already look at with, with uh, you know, in this, in this uh, chess club. But anyways, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this Rook and Pawn Endgame Lecture. Thanks. Bye. Yay.